tired of the everyday grind? Want to get away from it all? Descent into Paradise. everybody from sunny Florida. Here's wishing you the best of everything. And it's my personal belief that the best of everything comes from right down here. Hey everybody, this is Steph from JustTodayInParadise.com and thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Just a Podcast in Paradise. Me and the Dip Crew love living in the sunshine state and it's our goal to help you plan for your very own day in paradise. Follow along as we explore the keys, theme parks, springs, and everything in between. As you know, we're always going to have a drink for you, and today we've teamed up with our friends at Papa's Pilar and Shaker and Spoon to bring you a kiss of the ocean. We're ready if you are, so kick up your feet, throw on your shades, and let's take a trip to paradise. Hi, guys. Uh. Hey. So the, dr- so the drink was successful? It was delicious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so really excited about today's cocktail. It's called A Kiss of the Ocean. It's from Shaker and Spoon. It's Kiss of the Oceans. Oceans. Multiple oceans. oceans. It's very wet. Did, you know How what? many oceans are in the I, I took world? the first sip and I was like, is that the ocean? And then the back of my palate was like, no, it's multiple oceans. It's a little salty. <laughs> yeah, it is a little salty. Like the Pacific. Or the, I wonder or the if that's why it's called A Kiss of the Ocean. No, it's oh. mostly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you're a pirate... Then but right. it's kind of like trivia question, real yeah. quick. How many oceans are in the world? Four: Indian, Atlantic, Pacific, Cru- no, it's Caribbean Sea, Arctic. Yes, yeah. nice, killed nice. it. Wait, but like, what about like sub oceans? Is that a thing? Seas. No, not a thing at all. There's, there's gulfs, there's seas. seas. There's oh, seas. seas. Yeah. That's what the sub oceans are. That's what I was thinking. Of. <laughs> like the it's dead like sea. Like an asterisk. <laughs> I always wanted to go there. The ocean, not in Florida. But uh, will you pass me the the thing? I will. So. Shaker and Spoon. Had you guys heard of Shaker and Spoon before? I had not. No, no but I just like... realized that this was sugar cane, not a straw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could put your mouth on it. I like, I've never had, like, I've never taken a bite of a sugar cane stick, mm-hmm. but it's actually good. It tastes right? like raw sugar. Yeah. You could just. <laughs> All right. So for those of you that don't know about Shaker and Spoon and you want to get it on our level, uh, I would sort of liken it to, I don't know, like you guys have used HelloFresh. Right? Yeah, yes. kind of like Hello yeah. Fresh, but mm-hmm. for alcohol. But for cocktails, right? Because every week we do our best to try to come up with a cocktail, try to theme it around the episode, try to bring it back to Florida. But it's a lot at home to mm-hmm. not only plan on, but get all the ingredients. Mm-hmm. Cocktails are pretty complex. If you don't have a bar cart like you do, Steph, yeah. it's pretty hard to find all these cocktail recipes. Right. Like you're making them up yourself. And then that's just with the alcohol. But then yeah. you got to have all the different like bitters mm-hmm. and and different kinds of salts and, and yeah. you know, syrups. It's crazy. And I also love, like, having it portioned out. Like, you have just the right amount of stuff. Like, right. Like, exactly. right. waste. There are definitely certain things you put in a cocktail that you're never going to use again. Right. And then it's gone. And then now you have 500 nutmegs, and you don't know what to do with them. <laughs> uh, so if you want to ca- kick up your cocktail game, check out our friends at shakerandspoon.com or at shakerandspoon on Instagram. Uh, we really were excited about this box because... Everything in the box is themed around a spirit, and this month was all about rum. So we had to go with our boy down in Key West, uh, Ernest Hemingway, at Hemingway's oh, Rum man. Distillery. Uh, and we were using blonde rum for all these recipes. So, yeah. Try Papa's to Pilar. It. Papa's Pilar. Sounds we went like with blonde rum. rum. Yeah. It's so good. Mm. Can you eat sugar cane? Mm-hmm. You are, so I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this one has aged rum tamarindo syrup dashes of angostura bitters a pinch of sea salt and what megan i think is most excited about the sugar cane stick mm-hmm. all that comes in the box and that's just for the one recipe and then it comes with a lot more and it so, makes four yeah it I makes four of each too. it's incredible we can't say enough good things about it wait we can't say enough good things about it <laughs> get yourself a box shout out Stay from shaker and spoon, and, spoon. and a cold case too. yeah and hopefully the video will be out tomorrow where we attempt to make our first cocktail and it also Attempt. makes like pretty good. craft mm-hmm. cocktails a lot less intimidating. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you, obviously, you make craft cocktails all the time. So, but it's still I like first you know, I also on make a lot of fails. Yeah, sometimes they're just straight up alcohol and they don't taste very good. We don't so. experiment a lot, and this lets. What you am I hearing? With like the barmalade. I thought I heard a beep. The, the yeah. fresh ground nutmeg, the tamarindo yes. syrup. Tamarindo. That I would never. 
Be like, oh, I should put this good. in a cocktail. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So very exciting. Kiss of the ocean. Um, okay. So new segment alert. Should we do the new segment? It's not new a new segment, segment anymore. What's it's an old segment? segment. Our old segment, our old standby now. Uh, what's the most Florida thing you did this week? Oh, uh, I do like this segment. But I do I'm like never it too. Prepared to answer it. Well, well also we're recording it's be off the cuff. We're also yeah. recording mm-hmm. on Tuesday, so haven't had much. Yeah, but like since the last time we talked. Oh, okay. I know yeah. what it is. <laughs> I went to a shop called Curious Cargo. Okay. Um, is that what you're gonna say? <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing I can. That think is of. literally filled with everything you need to make a beach house. Yeah. It was they have like cool. all different kinds of like fish and dolphin and seashell themed decor. Uh-huh. So much wicker, so much outdoor furniture. <laughs> all of I'd the never wicker. been before, but I was like, wow. If I wanted to make a, a Florida themed house, it's a one stop shop. Yeah. yeah. I can't think of you anything. You sent some cool stuff, some cool pictures. Yeah, it was cool. I, and it wasn't insanely overpriced. No. There were really nice things there that were pretty expensive. And a huge variety. Really cool. I really can't say for myself. I will say, uh, uh, so I will defer to. The most Florida thing my brother did this week. Okay. He worked at Jet Ski Rentals on Christmas Day. <laughs> yeah, you can't really do that. And mm-hmm. in lounge chair rentals. New and York. it was like in the 50s and windy. Like, what are people jet skiing for? One in Rome, I guess. Well, I think, I think what it is is the differential. So mm-hmm. if you're coming from like negative 10 and you get out and it's, it's 55 like degrees, it's like yeah, your you're like, yeah. let's get the shorts on, let's go jet skiing. But yeah. You know? Yeah, so he picked up a shift to do jet ski rentals on wow. Christmas Day. Yeah, that's pretty Florida. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I did that was Florida. I feel like I got some of the sea salt in my nose. Um, that's pretty Florida. That is pretty Florida. <laughs> that, that, there we go. It's the most Florida thing I did. I don't know if this is super Florida, but I'm just going to say it anyway because I took uh, a thing from you guys and I went through my pictures. Uh, for our Christmas celebration, One, of, we play a lot of games here at the Dip Crew house, and one of the things we did was a blind tequila tasting. Is that Florida? I mean, alcoholism is Florida. (laughs) That's true. Uh, Yeah, so we went around and we all tried to figure out what the most expensive tequilas were. And I don't really want to talk about it. it So we, I think you guys know that we think of ourselves as tequila connoisseurs. Please, Gustavo Ortego, (laughs) Orzun, Gustavo Ortego, Orzun. Orzun. Don't listen to this episode. (laughs) We learned nothing from you. I had... It more right than I thought. I put it in the wrong order, though. I, I put it from best to worst instead of worst to best. Like, yeah. On the, yeah. So it was backward. And you were like, I mean, he's already like has like a you know an excuse. Just saying. <laughs> I did have but, the best one first. But Megan, I'm going to call you out. Yeah. So we had on the the table we had uh, Don Julio, mm-hmm. Casamigos, mm-hmm. 1800, mm-hmm. and Cuervo. Jose Cuervo. Megan. In the blind taste test, thought that Jose Cuervo was the best. I and I thought Casamigos was the worst. Yeah, yeah. So what does that tell Didn't you? you not like we don't know what we're talking about. It's got we like, were... a, like a a different flavor in there that I, I believe can't... they call it floral. Yeah, I didn't I didn't care for it. Yeah, and bear in mind we drank all these uh, at room temperature. We're really yeah. I think tequila needs a little ice, but we wanted to it really does. go in. We wanted to go in. And the Jose Cuervo was like the least harsh, which mm-hmm. I think is because the least authentic. Yeah. Least agave. Not the best. <laughs> oh, right. Probably the most raw sugar. Uh, but I think what we learned is, you know, you don't have to spend a ton of money to have a good time. I mean, we did in that scenario, but you don't have your to. Your dad we did. We taste the tequilas so that I you mean, can. I mean, you can God, your dad did. Yeah. Yeah. My dad, uh, my dad showed up with, he's like, can I get a hand out of the car? And he opened the trunk, and it looked like he bought every gift set from the liquor store. The liquor store. I love that there was. Sets. Yeah, we had Chambord, Frangelico. We got tons a new of flavors. Jack we got Daniels. A new, yeah, we got a new Jack Daniels uh, shaker cup. Yep. Yeah. What else? was French there? press. Yes. <laughs> there was eighteen hundred. A couple different yes, flavors. Yes. There's literally everything. Yeah. So we're gonna be coming at you with a lot of good new recipes, compliments of Daddy Dip Crow. <laughs> Thanks, Dale. Uh, so today marks two occasions. Really? One, our 30th episode. What? Wow. About to be in the can. Wow. And the last episode of 2020. Oh. I know. Well, the, thank you guys yeah. so much. And we for started everything. in 2020. Yeah, this is right? only a 2020 thing. Yeah. We're done. We're done. And we're done. Oh, just kidding. We can't stop. It. We're going to keep nope. going, can't even stop. if you're not stop. listening. Uh, so 
you know, in the beginning, you know, I think this was something that we talked about doing for a long time because, you know, we had the Damn Paradise brand where, you know, we blogged online about all of our favorite places. Uh, we loved helping people plan for their Florida vacations. But podcasting, I think, is one of the most fun mediums because that's where people really get to know you. You know? Yeah. But it takes a lot of work to get off the ground. Yeah, I think it was... <laughs> I think it was a coping mechanism for COVID to start it. Well, that's true. It helped a lot. We were like, well, because I had ordered some equipment early 2020, maybe late 2019. And it was one of those things that was on the back burner. Yeah. And nothing says start a new skill. Than a pandemic. Like a global pandemic where you can't leave your house. Hence you the podcasting. Yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, we've kind of evolved from travel planners to content creators. You never know what kind of curveballs uh, are going to happen, but I'm pretty stoked yeah. about how we're ending 2020 and all the things that it's going to, the next year is going to bring. Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't, I mean, we did do a few videos and everything before 2020. Um, one of my favorite ones still is the swine brine, the, the swine brine recipe. Oh my gosh. One that's of my, one of my one favorites of my too. Favorite Don't videos. go in too deep. We're going to share all of our favorites. But that's in 2019 though. Was it? Yeah. That's not what I saw. It was in November. Was it? Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. I had to change my favorite. Yeah, that I'm going to have to take that off my favorite. We ever did You're right. Because that, that was. Because it, it was also. <laughs> it was also. We always cut off Megan. It was after the bar crawl. Really? I had yeah, that on my list too. the bar crawl was the first one. Yeah, bar crawl was not We sh really should have talked about this. We yeah. should have. I, I, I assumed you knew. Are you sure? Megan brought it up to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm just trust all those, I mean, everything in 2019 was before we were able to create these, like, partnerships and relationships with these restaurants. That's true. Yeah. Excursions around Florida, and that's my favorite part about 2020. Of yeah. Course, yeah. All the friends we've made. Exactly. The friends we've made along the way. Yeah. Cultivating our brands along with others' others brands. Yeah. That's a good point because to me that's like one of the biggest motivators for me is like everybody knows about the big name places. You know, like everybody knows about the stuff that's right in your face that yep. if you Google a city, like that's what it's going to recommend you. I McDonald's. think we like to go, right, there's always, or Burger King, or Burger King. like you guys have talked about. Multiple times. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. But there's then there's those places that are off the beaten path that people don't know about, and we get to get people excited about them. Uh, so in today's episode, we are going to take a look back at all the fun that we've had, all the dipping that we've done, and shout out some of our favorite episodes, our favorite guests, our favorite videos, and some of our new spots that we think you should visit in new 2021 if you haven't new yet. New spots. New spots. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to talk about some of our sponsors, and then we're going to get back and have some more fun. Okay, Garrett, it's time for bed. No, 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 wait, wait. Can you, can, you, can you tell me a story first? All right, one story, and then it's nighty night for you. Do you remember the one about Meggie Locks and the three cocktails? <gasps> oh my gosh, I love this one. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Meggie Locks. She went for a walk on the beach. Pretty soon, she came upon a tiki bar. She sat down in the bar, and immediately she was served three beautiful cocktails. Meggie Locks can never resist a free drink. She tasted the first one and realized the straw was plastic. No, plastic is terrible for the environment. I can't drink this. So, she tasted the second drink. Gross. The straw is all soggy, and all I taste is paper. So, she tasted the last cocktail. Mmm, this hay straw is perfect. She said happily and enjoyed the rest of her delicious margarita. Well, Garrett, what's the moral of the story? <sighs> that when you use hay straws, all natural, 100%, biodegradable, gluten-free, and never soggy straws, you're actually doing your part to help take care of our planet. They can be tossed right in the compost bin after and will break down naturally and return to the circle that's right, big guy. Good night, Steph. Good night, Garrett. We can all sleep a little easier thanks to Haystraws. <sighs> Visit Haystraws.com to find out more. Okay. 
And we're back. Hi. Yep. Uh, so, as promised, we are going to do a little roundtable and look back on 2020. Look it back. Look, look it back. The look it uh, back. So, we're breaking it down into four little pieces. Uh, first and foremost, I think we have to talk about the podcast. So, of we've course. had 30 episodes. Yeah. I think we each call a favorite episode. So, I, especially if you're a new listener and you want to go back and look at all the weirdness, uh, this will be a good episode for you to check out. So, all right. Tell me what you think. Um, yeah, I've got two, actually. Okay. One of them, honestly, episode one. Who was the dip crew? Yes. We did a, we did a virtual walkthrough of... Uh, of Epcot and at That's the right. Food and Wine Fest. That was a lot of fun. Interesting. Megan was very, very passionate about where she was going to eat. She did a lot of research mm-hmm. on the virtual one. Uh, more research than she did when we went last time. <laughs> um, that was fun. Especially because yeah. we couldn't... I listened to that episode today. It's tough. Because I thought it was poetic. Uh, the sound was garbage. We were all... I was on a I microphone. Blame, we were we calling into a Skype. We yep. blame you. You blame me? Why? Yeah, because you wouldn't let us see you guys. But that, still, I still wouldn't have had good equipment. That was during the heat of the pandemic, and yeah. we were very scared to venture outside. We so, were like, nope, don't look at me. So heated. Right. <laughs> so heated. Uh, so yeah, the sound was rough, but I feel like the heart and spirit of the show was still there. Yeah. It, was good. it was good. episode. Another one I liked was episode six, Star Spangled Paradise. Wait, it's not episode six, because I'm talking about episode oh, six. Oh, sorry. Episode, episode. Maybe, they, maybe you, here, let me just pull it up really quick. You're right. Sorry. It's episode 11. Episode 11. I'm sorry. Yep. I looked at episode six because Megan was looking at it. That's my bad. Uh, Star Spangled Paradise. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one of the most ad-libbed ones. I think we did really, really well with it, and it was really <laughs> funny to make that one. And things were, I remember as we were researching, things were changing like by the second yeah. because I think people were still trying to figure out if COVID was going to stop all of the holiday festivities, mm-hmm. and they weren't sure. So even as we were preparing for the show... Things were getting canceled. Yes. What did we do for Fourth of July? I don't think we. Oh, did we anything. went to my we went to my dad's house. Yeah, so really nothing. And then we got COVID yeah. right after. Nice. Oh, we did. Uh huh. Oh, that's uh-huh. nice. Uh-huh. Uh, the producer and I went to a local gastro pub with Sarah and Alyssa gastro-pub. and um, Bartulia. That's a gastro. Pub. That mm-hmm. is a gastro pub. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they opened up. A new area called Nona's Garden where you could sit outside. Yeah, that's cool. So a nice silver lining in some of this COVID stuff is that people and businesses are being really innovative. Mm-hmm. So now you can pretty much always get a seat uh, at this really small pub, which is cool. And we had just gotten cricket. And so cricket yeah. came out with us for dinner and nice. we got sparklers. It was a fun time. I remember it was really hot outside. It was hot. It was really it's sick. Hot. It's always so hot in the mm-hmm. summer. Yeah, it was crazy hot. I'd love to talk about my favorite episode. Go, please. <laughs> uh, number six. Yep. Going ape. Sh- sh- our sh- top Florida animal encounters. Yes. And I love that because I feel like I mean I'm not like very well traveled in the mm-hmm. continental U.S. But I feel like Florida is a hot spot for animal encounters. Oh yeah. Yes, it is. Really peculiar one. Yes, for oh, sure. Yeah. Like we have not only do a lot of cool mm-hmm. zoos, but we have like a lot of like wildlife sanctuaries, like right here in Naples, which is an odd place. We have the Shy Wolf Sanctuary, mm-hmm. and then yeah, on the East Coast, there's a the Lion Country Safari. Right. There's that big other one in Miami. I forget what it's called. Zoo and Wildlife Foundation. Zoological. Zoological. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that <sighs> turns out is not that, like the best place to be because. No, Megan. Wait, really, Bad. really huh. quick. I have a quick question. Yeah, that was episode six, right? Yes. yes. That's a dip. Never mind. We also talked about Carol Baskin. We did. That's when Tiger King was hot. hot. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. We were Sardine very, oil. Am we I right? Very current for that episode. God, that's we're pretty. We're nothing if not hip. Yeah, we're yeah. definitely hip. I mean, yeah. But anyway, if you love animals, <laughs> listen to that episode because we make a lot of really good recommendations. Except yeah, for, for sure. except for that. I mean, listen. You know, things happen. We are not responsible for the bad, shady business that maybe some establishments are doing. But when we learn about it, we'll make it right. You know what I mean? That's show, man. You know what I'm saying? Tiger King? Tiger yeah, King if you now. haven't... I mean, just an aside, if you haven't seen Tiger King, you're living under a rock, please go watch it. It's great. It has everything. Uh, gay cowboys. Murder. Rap music. Sardine oil. Murder. Big cats. Murder. 
Well, definitely reality shows. Like uplift, like uh, it's uplift you. No, not uplift. What's it's like flip, throw you flip, out? Flip your expectations around. It I guess. will whatever you Blow think. Your mind. Tiger King is. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. The the director didn't even think it was what it was. Oh my yeah. god! Murder for hire. Yeah. Yeah. Hitman. Wow. Jeff Lowe. Anyway. Everything. Oh my gosh. Methamphetamines. Whatever you need. Huh. Tiger Missing King has teeth. it all. Three teeth. Perfect for COVID. Come as you are with however many teeth you have and Embracing watch Tiger King. Embracing homosexuality. Right. Wait, no? <laughs> Embracing a new sexuality. I mean, you can have as no. many husbands as you want. Oh, yeah. And Polygamy. you can be as many uh. men as you want. <laughs> That's what Tiger King has taught me. Mm. Mullets. Good for you, Steph. <laughs> there you go. Moving on. Uh, Moving on. Let's talk about... Oh, wait. I never said my favorite episode. Oh. It's kind of a good segue because my favorite episode, and I know to you guys, this is going to seem like low-hanging fruit. But my favorite episode is number episode 18, mm. the magic behind mixology and interview with Gustavo Ortega. So Boyer Zoom. I'm oh, going to yeah. say you shouldn't have picked that because you're also asking us who your favorite guest. OK, was. so I'm not going to say anything about the guest himself other than to say that this was my favorite episode because I feel like it solidified where we were going. That's Be, a good point. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I think coming into this, we felt like experts on a lot of things because we've explored a lot of Florida. We have so many opinions that you can't shut us up, but you can't be subject matter expert on everything. And there's some things that you experience that you want to know a little bit more about. And I feel like that's where we're going in 2021 and what this episode sort of, I don't know, helped us. Set pivot the tone. Toward. Set the tone. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, we love Epcot. I mean, that's the place that we talked about in our first episode. And, you know, we love cocktails. And What does that sound? And, yeah. you know, we love cocktails. And this really brought all of that together. And we got to meet uh, one of our heroes in the mixology realm, Gustavo Ortega Oyarzun. So I won't talk about him just yet, if that, he's one of your favorite guests. But I'd love to hear who you guys loved meeting. This year, we can just segue in episode eighteen because I mean that was mm-hmm. that was my my favorite interview just because honestly like what episode or so episode eighteen what yeah. were we, what are we talking about Gustavo Gustavo oh okay yeah my bad go ahead as you were <laughs> we interviewed him it's the straight room yeah it, yeah uh, I didn't realize how much goes in tequila I don't I didn't realize how much goes into what Epcot does with their cocktails and everything in the Mexican Pavilion like. Seriously, the margaritas in the Mexican Pavilion are my favorite margaritas the best. I've ever had in my life. Oh, yes, I had, I had two of them last time. The I avocado, Gosh, oh, so avocado good. We, we got to try the tomato margarita, got, which is yeah. their latest yep. concoction. We got to. Uh, I don't want to brag. Mm. I don't. I mean, okay, I do. I want to brag. <laughs> so the producer and I were in Epcot the day before. The tomato margarita released, and upon learning of who we were, they were like, "You guys have to try this first. You guys have to be the first Did people to try this." They say you guys have to, or you were like, we were like, we, we, we were like, have have to. We're like, we're all set. We can't drink anything else." And they're like, "No, no, no. Why don't Please you stick around?" This. I'm kidding. We were the entire we group were chat. like, "Please, do you know who we Please, are? Please, we've heard of <laughs> Gustavo. Can you please help us try the tomato margarita?" And as always, uh, they were so accommodating and mm-hmm. so nice, and they made us a couple. And then we started a little bit of a riot, and it was delicious, like every drink that he's ever created. I just it is so riot. good. Because then other people were like, oh, "What's that? Oh, is that tomato margarita? Is that a hidden menu item?" And we were like, "Yes." Well, until tomorrow, you can't try it today. But of course, it's Disney, and they're super nice, and they let people try. Yeah, it. I got to try that one. Megan had it; it was delicious. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, when I hear avocado margarita and I hear tomato margarita, I'm like vegetables chips and salsa. Like, why don't I have vegetables? In, right, and it sounds shocking, but it's like those t- tiny elements of like acidity or yes. creaminess or whatever. It just like takes what you know about a margarita and throws it right over it was the edge. Like drinking or the mesa. It was like drinking avocado tea. milk. That's okay. what it's like. Yeah. Mm, it's it's like, so creamy. And, I like oh it to kind of like a smoothie because there's that kind yes, of melon yeah. in there. Sure. Oh my gosh, so good. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, big fan. But it, it, we, we learned so much from him. We mm. a, lot of, a lot of cool merch that he sells, his, uh, all of his salts and everything. Um, just really cool that he really get, you know made a name for himself and you know, got to make the the best cocktails in Disney. Yes. He was Agreed. definitely interesting and he knew a lot. And he was lot. interested to speak with us too. 
Yeah, I think, you know, he was excited to share a little bit about what he does and educate. You can tell he's passionate about Mm -hmm. tequila. And I love talking to people that are passionate about what they do. Um, What the hell is his art of drink? Art of drunk. There we go. I'm done, ladies and gentlemen. (sighs) Yeah, see, artofdrink.net. Yeah. Uh, Online.com. Okay, he so artofdrink.net is for something else. So that's artofdrink.com? Shop salts. So Shop uh, salts. we... The salts actually, are in dot .com. Yes. Dot .com. Okay, so I actually purchased the producer a collection of salts from Gustavo for Crima. Uh, so if you want to get some, check them out. Make some cool cocktails at home. Check out artofdrinknyc.com. If you live in NYC, you can get the avocado margarita delivered what you are you kidding get it delivered serves six to seven individual cocktails. 67 individual six cocktails. to seven <laughs> and it's only 39 dollars, which is a good price for that many cocktails we gotta find someone in nyc to yeah. order them and that's and not the there. i mean they have other ones you can get delivered uh-huh. but, i mean that's the one i would recommend oh yeah totally absolutely cool. check out our boy <clears throat> gustavo all right thank you garrett megan favorite You're guest welcome. my favorite guest has to be skunk ape dave Sheely. <gasps> Skunk Ape Dave. What I loved him. Yeah, I love him. Is yeah. that he kind of, you know, steered it in his own direction. Yeah. We had questions. He was and like, he I can was go like, my mm-hmm. own way. It's like Jeopardy. He comes with the answers. I'm here to talk and you're Doesn't here matter. to listen. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I did listen. The man trucks miles through the Everglades in the in the middle of the night in the heat of the summer. Eating swamp apples. One of the most legendary men I've ever spoken yeah. to. And yeah. I can understand why he was like, listen, I got a lot to say and you're just going to shut up and hear it. <laughs> you're just yes. going to listen to me. You're just going to listen. I also love how he didn't really seem to care if people thought he was like full of crap yeah. or believed in the skunk ape, he's like, this is my house. I've seen yeah, it. He's like, I didn't live here. Right. Like, how are you going to tell yeah. me that there's not a skunk ape? Get out of my face. So uh, I loved his, I don't know. I loved his whole thing. I couldn't agree more. Cool dude. Yeah. Shout very, out very sure. to Skunk Ape Dave or Dave Shealy. Check out Skunk Ape Headquarters on 41. <laughs> um, Stephanie, what about you? So. Did you just call I her Stephanie? It. Stephanie. That's my full name. Stephanie's my father. Stephanie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, I could, it was hard for me to pick one. Uh, I it's wrote good, everyone down. So I'm just going to shout out everyone that we got to talk to this year. We talked to Gustavo. We talked to Dave Shealy. We talked to Kyle Rawson from Man Gear. Loved that. There was the whole family vibe there. Mm-hmm. Love that. I forget the name of the aunt, but like they do uh, their designs together she, for she, all their shirts. Yeah. yeah that's like so That's so cool. cool. I love that. Them. You guys didn't get to meet Ali Greco because you were doing something else i forget what it was uh, but yeah but she got to teach us all about the manatees we actually have our manatee calendar hanging in the studio right now thank you to adoptmanatee.org if you're looking for something to spend your christmas cash on like adopting a manatee, like adopting a manatee go ahead to adoptmanatee.org but something that was near and dear to my heart was getting to meet david sloan yeah from we love Key West. Yes. Yeah, we love Key West. We love ghosts. We love ghosts. Love Robert the Doll. And my favorite part of the entire interview was when we like casually were like, say hi to Robert for me. And he's like, I already told him we were talking. And I was like, ah! you know, uh, so <laughs> so if you haven't been uh, to, what is it? God, what's the name? I didn't Key know. West. Huh? Haunted Key West. Uh, dot com. Yes, but they also have a, the new the, the Haunted Doll Tours on a separate website, which is ghostfort.com. Yeah, so check out ghostfort.com. If you want to get the crap scared out of you the next time you're in Key West, get to meet Robert the Doll himself at night. Stay for the Ouija board after dark. I can't even say no. it. It sounds Ouija so board? scary. I, oh, my God. I wouldn't do it. Oh, heck no. I feel no, like we ha- next time we're there, I feel like we have to. Oh, right. my God, it's so scary. Uh, so, yeah, those were some of my favorite guests. And... This year, we really went in on the YouTube videos Mm -hmm. because we can describe this stuff for you. We can post about it on Instagram. So until you actually see it, you know, it changes the whole thing. So I wanted to talk about some of our favorite videos. This episode's lit. It is lit. Okay. Uh, So yeah. So what are... Gosh. Just give me one. Just give me one because there's so many. I'm going to give you two. Okay. It's hard to pick because I really... Thoroughly enjoyed every video we've ever made. Uh huh. But I'm gonna pick two favorites. Okay. One is Fernandez the Bull. 
Yes. I'm already a huge fan of their food, and we got to try their brand new cocktail menu. Yes. So Can I say something? Every time we bring up Fernandez, the bowl I salivate. It's so good. What is Delicious. that? Schrodinger's? No, that's something else. What is it? The, bo- the Pavlov's, what, dog? Pavlov's dogs. Yeah, I'm a is. Pavlov dog. So it was just a combination of things that I knew that I loved and things that I got to experience yes. for the first time. So I love that about it. And mm-hmm. it's just, they, you know, great people, great hosts. Oh, great food. Great hot sauce. Great cocktails. Yeah. Great hot sauce. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, the I best. wasn't at that one. But. And yeah, we my, missed you. My number two is going to be uh, the Dip Dives at Parrot Bar. Yes. And for me, Chicken that's wings. special because Gare and I did that completely solo. You edited it solo. conceived that it's whole thing. A little insider tip. It's the only video on our entire YouTube that was not edited by Steph. Yeah, you guys, from start to finish, you were like, uh, we want to do a segment called Dip Dives, um, where we go to dive bars and eat chicken wings. And I'm like, fantastic, there go, aren't a go lot make of one. dive bars around here. Not, not in Naples, it's Naples, but in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can definitely we'll find venture a lot. out. And it looks really good. I've been there, and it's fun. I totally recommend mm-hmm. it, and you guys did a great job. It's a great Florida Thanks. vibe, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Garrett, <laughs> favorite video? <sighs> I'm going to go a little narcissist on this one. <laughs> Take a guess. I think you know. Is it drunk Disney? It's drunk Disney. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, the reason why is because it was so much fun to make because all four of us were around and like, yeah. we were all just like shooting the shit. And uh-huh. just, it was it just turned into kind of yeah. what it was. As a yeah. concept, I love it. It was yeah. just so much fun and I, and I think we should do more. Yeah, we're uh, I'm sitting on some great drunk Disney content from Megan. I'm uh, anxiously that, waiting. Uh, yeah, that we need and to go. You up. have to go next, and we'll have to video it. Yeah, uh, I think it's one of those things, sort of like the podcast that we were talking about doing forever, mm-hmm. and we just you know we got drunk enough. We have one so night many to do fantastic it. ideas, right? And then exactly, we got drunk enough uh, to do it one night, and Garrett got to tell us about uh, all about Toy Story. Yeah, so I think that's fun. Uh, we want to do more fun stuff like that. That's not necessarily making a recommendation but just having fun uh about florida so yeah i think that was a cool video gosh i have so many written down but if we're only picking one uh all right well i'll take a page out of megan's book and i'm gonna say two i love the second real kind video that we did the second one. because if you go back like a year which puts us like at the borderline of uh looking back at this year we got to go out with a local company called real kind tours and go shelling uh shelling is which we talk about i thought it was gonna be lame right it sounds like something that retired people do which they do which they absolutely do uh, but it's, it's sort of like, I don't know, like, it sounds like slow paced. Like, I don't know why I would want to do that. There's so many other things to do. Maybe I'll try gel in uh, a couple decades, but we went, I went out with the producer and we had the absolute best time. They took us out to a sandbar. We got to find all these cool shells and it's not just shells out there. Like there's wildlife and there's all sorts of cool snails and fish. And sometimes you might run into a friendly dog, which we did on both tours. Mm. Uh, and it's super cool and it's really secluded and it's relaxing, you know, cause sometimes I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but we go out and we go hard, you know, there was no tequila shots. On this boat tour, there was no mimosas. This is just you and nature and exploring and having fun. And then this year, we got the opportunity to go out with you guys. And I think we had just as much fun. Yeah, it was definitely exceeded yeah. my expectations. Right? It is really relaxing. I, yeah. of course, love the dog. The dog was running through the water, having right. a good time. We saw, like, um, I forget what they're called, olive snails? Yep, olive snails. Yep. Those are so cool. Yeah, I love that. Sand mm-hmm. dollars galore. And, like, you know, you have, like, a goal because you want to find the rare Genonia, which right. is fun. fun. We didn't find it, but it's we still, still have not like, found like, it. we're going to do it. We're going to get this. Time. And you get competitive, you yes. know, because then there's other people around that are finding these coveted shells. And you're not. Right. And you're, uh-huh. like, ready to you're throw. Like, Damn it, something. Barbara found it. Right. How could you let this happen? Barbara, <laughs> give me back my Genonia. And then there's, like, a fight that right. breaks out. <laughs> and the captains have to separate you. It's a whole thing. Uh, and you get to take the drone out because you're in the middle of nowhere. So that's pretty cool. But uh, I think one video that really set the tone for some of the rest of the videos that we were going to do is The Real Macaw. Yes. That was yes. the first full restaurant review that we did. We got to visit a place in our own hometown that we had driven by a million times and never got to stop in. The food was awesome. The staff was great. 
And I don't know. It really just, I think, opened our eyes it to was. what dipping could really a be. A great experience. We've yeah. never been there. It was very, like, photogenic because it was so colorful and right. unique. And we got to try so many different things. Yeah. were incredibly accommodating. It was, it was like, you know. Oh, my gosh. We ate so much. It did set the tone for what we were going to do. That calamari. Gonna do. Oh, oh calamari. my gosh. And it kind of, like, for me, like, reminds me that even in your own backyard, you can go exploring and find some cool hidden gems. Uh, which... Another great segue, Steph. Uh, favorite new spots? Did, did, did you say your favorite video? Yeah, I drunk Disney. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. The narcissist pick. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> part of something, or, well, something that I think we've really committed to as a crew, even when we go uh, on vacation just for funsies, we really try to find something new for ourselves and so that we can report back to you guys. So I'd like to know if there's any favorite new spots that you guys tried this year. Yeah. Tell me about them. Well, I mean, you guys brought me to a Blackfin. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up because that's not new for me, but it was new for you. And I know we hyped it up a lot. And sometimes when people hype things up, it can easily disappoint you. I'm going to so. just say it really quickly. You're going to have to edit this out. It was f***ing incredible. Oh, my gosh. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, was so good about it? I mean, the burger, of course. Mm -hmm. Megan, even your pasta was delicious. It was. Oh, it had honestly. an egg yolk on there. Oh. <laughs> Cabanada. Cabanada. Yeah. So good, so rich. Best burger. Oh, my gosh. And and it's very... It's like... It's not... It's pretty simple. Yes. It's not like... There's not a Clean. crap ton on uh -huh. it or anything yeah. like that. You don't have, you don't have lettuce. And easily missed in Key West. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't have lettuce and tomato on there. And every time I see, like, people that... Like I went to high school with or college with that are in Key West. I'm like, you're not going to the cool places we went to. Right, exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like, Key West is pretty small, but there's like a hub right around, you know, the one side of Duval Street where everybody goes, where Sloppy Joe's is, where there's yeah. the taco I place. I forget like, the name of it. Right. Really? Amigos. But Amigos, wow. yeah. And Hogs Breath. Senor Frogs. Right. You like, know? come on. Yeah. The Hard Rock cafe wow yeah. please i'm all set wow uh so we try to find places that are off the beaten path and what's great about blackfin is that it's on the complete opposite side of duval so it's still centrally located like if you're staying downtown but it's very like you said easily missed it's a tiny little bistro mm -hmm. they have a small indoor dining room a beautiful outdoor patio and some of the best food that i've ever had yes incredible go there unbelievable yep good and they 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 pair your alcohol with uh, the food pretty well, too. Yes. They, they, I love like that. Recommend they recommend, yeah, no liquor, but they recommend nice beer and wine. Yeah, it's nice. Yep. I love it. Cool. I, I have two again. Uh, okay. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't. I had one. Oh, oh go one. ahead. Oh. Key West in general. <laughs> All of Key West. Yes. Actually, because That's I'd only a good been there point, one time. Because you had never been until we dragged you. I was there for half a day, and I didn't do anything, and... Now it's amazing, and I want to go. I want, I want to be there every second of every day. Well, the only I'm, reason I wouldn't be super keen on living there is because every hurricane, you're either completely screwed or you have to evacuate. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But shout out to Key West. We love Do you guys. love Key West. Mm -hmm. Yes. Big fan. So I too. Mm -hmm. First is our most recent restaurant review, which is Chard Bistro in Benita Springs. Yes. I had one of the best meals I've ever eaten. Every single thing we ate was absolutely delicious. Octopus. My favorite meal was the, what was, so, wait, miso Miso, miso yaki sea bass. Miso yaki sea bass. Yes. Miso yaki sea bass with wasabi soy beurre blanc. Definitely Ooh. check out that video because it was so incredibly delicious. I love Asian flavors. Yes. And I love sea bass. So it was just perfect. And then there's tons of meats if you oh. don't want fish. It was just perfect. Was, love I love meats. it. I love everything about it. Couldn't recommend it enough. It is not close to us. And yeah. I will go out of my way anytime to go there. And like anybody that will listen to me, like literally just people walking past on the street. I'm like, have you been to Charge yes. Bistro in Benita Springs? It is so, highly recommend. so good. They have a Naples location, which has some of the same offerings, but they don't have the miso yaki sea bass. Not enough. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. They also uh, do burgers and stuff yes, for lunch. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm. They have a, a steak special on Thursdays. Yeah, they have it's good great. Specials and, the, stuff. and the the staff was incredible. Yes, the ambiance very was knowledgeable. Cool. Right. Like I feel like it's hard to find a restaurant that hits every mark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they absolutely did. Absolutely. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Number two for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Florida is not well renowned for its Asian food, but 
like previously stated, Asian food is really my favorite. Mm -hmm. And Orlando has two locations. It's called Domu. It's from Orlando. It's like a Japanese ramen place. They have one delicious and unique. They have both traditional and unique ramens, but they also have some of the best wings I've ever tasted. Mm. They're like super crispy and a kimchi butter sauce, and they have like some kind of breading on it, but they're gluten free, which like. I mean, I'm not gluten intolerant, but if you are and you want some delicious crispy wings, that's the place to go. Uh-huh. And I had a wonderful experience. They have cocktails and like little cute little spa bathtubs. They have like fun little presentations. That's right. I remember. You it's not a full size pictures. bathtub, though. No, <laughs> false it's not. But they just have no. really cute displays and yeah. delicious, delicious food. I can't wait to go oh, back. Megan, I'm so hungry. What did I have again? Over there? You had um, ma- Mazeman, which is like a. A uh, brothless ramen oh, and like a brothless. It's kind ramen. of like a like a Japanese pasta. Oh god, it was so good. Oh, I want to go back there. We're it's going so back there good. in a few months. Yes, oh, first I fun. need to go back. So I had two, but just for the sake of time, uh, I'm going to say one, and the producer might be mad at me for this. Okay. I am obsessed with sakushi on the beach. Let me preface this by saying I don't particularly care for Asian cuisine. Me too. It's not my thing. Me too. There's some things that I have that I like. Uh, anyone that puts pork belly in that many things, I can't be that mad at. But I'm not like, I want Asian food, you know? Uh, Sakushi on the beach is in Clearwater. Two reasons that I love it. One is in Clearwater, it's like a beach town, you know? Like everywhere you go, you can get like nachos and tacos and, you know, that kind of American style food. Uh, There's some great places that we love there, but it's hard to, it's either like that or like a five star sit down steakhouse and not a lot in between. But Sakushi on the Beach is a sister, I guess, restaurant or second location. They have a place in Las Vegas, so you can imagine the quality of food and the showmanship. They make fried rice at your table. Nice. Love and it's, fried rice. Yeah, and it's not just like a gimmick. Like, it's delicious. They had some sake cocktails that were really good. The service was great. There's a lot of shareable plates, which is cool if you're going with, you know, a crew, sushi. They had all of it. I loved it. Big fan. Nice. Did they have bell buns? They should. If you're listening, <laughs> Sakushi on the beach, you should have bell buns. Uh, and then, all right, I'm just going to shout them out. In Orlando, we found a great new spot. Um, is it really in Orlando? Maybe it's like Buena Vista. Kissimmee? I don't know. Uh, look it up. Sakiba in Old Town, Orlando. Uh, Old Town is one of those places that has, I don't know, they have like rides, weird like general store and games and stuff. Uh, it's a pretty happening spot. Uh, but they had a great Asian sushi place with really cool happy hour and so inexpensive. I couldn't believe it. And the food was phenomenal. We do need to still try that. And you're probably like, wow, three Asian selections. I know. <laughs> but it's because really, really good Asian is hard to find. In it Florida. is hard to find in Florida, you know, and it, especially if you're not trying to spend a ton of money. Yes. Uh, straight. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to spend, I don't know, a hundred bucks a head for sushi. I'm just not. That's true. Yeah. So love these places. Uh, all right. So we're going to take a quick break. And then we, when we come back, we're going to look forward. Enough about 2020. What? Let's look at 2021. You guys ready? Yes. Wow, playing frisbee on the beach is the best. I know. What a great day for fun in the sun. Why don't you come join us, Garrett? I know how much you love ultimate frisbee. You know, I'm actually going to sit this one out, guys. Garrett, that's not like you. Is something wrong? It's just that, you know, it's really hot out, and and my thighs, they're, they're so clammy. Oh, don't worry, bro. We've all been there. I've got just the thing in my beach bag. Try this bala powder. Powder? Steph, isn't that for babies? <laughs> Not this powder, Gare Bear. Whether you're enjoying an actual day in paradise or just grinding away and daydreaming of your next dip to come, Bala Body Products for Men will keep you feeling fresh, comfortable, and smelling great. The finest Italian talc blend with all natural essentials and fragrances that will keep you chafe free and walking confidently wherever your journey through paradise takes you. 
Wow, Steph, you're right. I've never felt so fresh and comfortable. I'm gonna wear this at the office. And it smells good, too. All right, Garrett, go along. <laughs> Don't mind if I do, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, wow. These kisses from the ocean, kisses of the oceans, mm -hmm. they're uh, it kissing me with their best yeah. shots, <laughs> so to speak. So good. And you know what? It's pretty satisfying that I didn't have to do very much to make this. Thank you. Right? Thanks, Shaker and Spoon. Thank mm. you. <laughs> so I thought uh, before we leave wow. our friends at home, we're going to look forward to the next year. Uh, so for next year... We want to figure out how to bring you even more Florida fun and more importantly, the fuel to fire up your next vacation. I personally am a strong believer that you only get a finite amount of time on vacation and you want to spend it well. Doing you want to something. experience new things, right? Maybe some old standbys, but you want to be with the people that you love. You don't want to feel like you're wasting your time. And I think that I want to make a resolution personally to put out even more content on our YouTube and Instagram. And yeah, I want to stay fun, but I want to stay true to that idea that we want to help people not waste time and do all the best stuff. Be professional. Us? Need to be, yeah. <laughs> Stop burping. No. <laughs> Ever. Do you, yeah? Do you guys have any? I, I do it one time, and yeah, I'm just messing with you. I want to experience more of Florida. Like I feel like I go to Orlando, I go to Naples, I go to Miami, I go to Key West. Yes. What else is there? Yeah. Never been to a Florida Springs. How long? Never been to, to a go. Florida Springs. It's right. Three sisters. There's tour. 700. Yeah, that counts. So you've been to a spring, but I didn't like. Yeah, you're right. I have. Yeah, but, but you want to go to more springs? Yeah. More springs. I'm yeah. Thinking <laughs> of cities in Florida, Zolfo Springs. I want to go to more springs. Ginny Springs. I want to do more Blue in Springs. Tampa. Because yeah. I feel like we don't ever go to Tampa. I want there's a lot meet, in Tampa. So Lauren, uh, the cool mom, was just telling me that, because I was like, oh my God, empanada mama. I've seen it all over yes. Instagram. I need to try this. And she's like, yeah, it's Who freaking amazing. Empanada mama? It looks there's so There's this place good. that makes all these different kinds of empanadas. Yeah. In this place, I think it's called Armature Works in well, Tampa. It's like a collection of little eateries, and they're supposed to be incredible. Well, Megan... We're going to St. Pete and we're going to go to Tampa for one of the days. <gasps> go to Empanada Please, Mama. I want to go there so bad. Okay, go. then we're going there go, after Bush go, Gardens. Go, uh, I think that's a great uh, resolution, Megan. I also want to expand our horizons a little bit. I really want to go to Destin. Me too. Can we just Crab make a pack? Just Crab Island. Before the year's Island. Island. Crab, Crab Island. Island. Crab, Crab Island. Island. Crab Island. Crab Island. Crab Island. That was intense. <laughs> okay. That's Great. how I feel about Crab Island. Crab Island. Island. That's Very my resolution. We, we, we learned about Crab Island in like episode two. I yeah, think. so we still haven't been. I won't forget it. But in our defense, the world Ooh, was closed. Snow Cat Ridge. That's a 2021 goal. Okay, you have to do that like now. 2021 goal? That's right. a 2020. But it's cold now. I guess it'll be cold again. Yeah. At the end of I guess it could go in January. Unless yeah. like it's just like global warming turns into a real thing. Okay. Just, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Any other resolutions? Um, I mean, with all, sorry, drop some weight so I can eat more. Same. That's exactly what I was about yeah. to say. We eat a lot. We need to Florida. find balance. Screw you, COVID. And like, when we're going to review a restaurant, we're not just going to like get one portion each. We want to try it all. Mm -hmm. So, so then, maybe we can make a resolution that we only eat like pigs when we're making a video. That's a good no. idea. That's and a good no, idea. And we starve ourselves the rest uh -huh. of the it's, time. Yeah. It's just like with the pandemic and everything. We didn't it's move just, that much. We didn't move that much, and my back hurts now. What if we make, uh, like, more active lifestyle videos? We could I try that. Maybe we, yeah. we take the dip maybe crew out, like stand up paddleboarding. I would. Florida five. Oh my god! Yes. If we did, if we did, <laughs> how to paddleboard yoga with Garrett? Listen, paddleboard yoga. There's a beer run uh -huh. in Isla Morada, I think, uh -huh. where they give you a. You have to like drink a beer every quarter mile. Mile? Sorry. And you throw up at the end? That's a run that we can And then get at the into. end you vomit. All right. Uh, I think those are beautiful resolutions, and I think we can uh, hold to them. So if you want to know if we stick to these resolutions, you have to listen to us for 52 more episodes. Mm -hmm.
and thank you so much for tuning in to Just a Podcast in Paradise. We are so happy that you hung out with us today. We would love it if you would subscribe so you don't miss an episode and give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts so we can continue to work hard to make your next Florida vacation the most memorable. You can also follow us on Instagram at Just Take a Dip for daily updates on what's happening around Florida and check out our YouTube channel Just a Day in Paradise for destination ideas, restaurant reviews, unboxing things you might want to take on your next trip and copycat recipes from some of your favorite places in paradise we're wishing you a little bit of sunshine wherever you are a happy freaking new year and we hope to see you in 2021 soon say bye guys see you then guys bye. Bye. Happy-